Lori Wallach is the director of Public Citizens Global Trade Watch. He joins us now from Washington with her perspective on the administration's plan. Lori, welcome to Bloomberg News. Good to have you on again. Thank you. Lori, before we get into President Obama's remarks, let's talk about that number today, the trade gap unexpectedly falling. Were you surprised by that? Not really. It's January's numbers, so it's starting to reflect the drop in Toyota sales, cars, and also the oil sector were the places where you saw the drop, and both in volume and price in, in oil imports. What was interesting to me, actually, is that exports dropped relative to December of 2009. And that, I think, also reflects the still wobbly situation in the global economy. So, Lori, do you think then that uh, the president's plan to try and increase exports by the magnitude he's talking about is even more of a, an uphill battle? Well, I think it's a good idea. And I think it's important for the United States to have a plan about how to achieve export growth. The, what the president's laid out is some of the right steps. I think there's going to have to be a lot more to get done. It is the case that it's a very rare situation to double exports in the time period he's suggesting. But the bigger challenge, really, is even if you were to achieve that, we also have to deal with the import side. So we think it's good news when our trade deficit is less bad than we expect. Hmm. But wouldn't it be great if we had a surplus? And that's to say, if we doubled exports and we stayed at the same balance we have now, we would have a whopping trade deficit, which, as we all know, is decline in, in jobs, undermines our growth rate. And so we have to look at the other side of the formula as well, the import flood. And some of that is very specific stuff. It's China manipulating its currency, effectively right. well, dumping but, into our market. But isn't it also the demand from the U.S.? I mean, especially in a recessionary or still a, a, an early economic recovery environment, isn't it still the demand for inexpensive goods that's driving that? Well, I mean, the peak, the peak was in 2006, so we had an $800 billion trade deficit, a huge part of that from China. That was all pre-crisis, not recession, not recovery. There's structural imbalances that have to do with the existing global trade rules, those are the World Trade Organization, but also the practices of some of the United States' most major trade partners, like China, which is basically competing unfairly by manipulating the value of its currency. It's basically getting uh, a benefit that is not competition on a fair basis relative right. to the value of the goods, et cetera. Lori, the, the president's made doubling exports over the next five years one of his top goals, one of his top priorities. Julie mentioned the global economic climate. Given that we are in what uh, Mr. Bernanke had called the nascent stages of a recovery, is that feasible? Is that likely at this point? Well, it's hard to know exactly all of what they'd need to do to accomplish it. On the basis of what they've laid out so far, I think that would be a far reach. But I think they're still figuring out some of the other ways in which they will promote U.S. exports. Here's the thing, though. They really do need to look on the import side, because the goal of this is not to create export growth per se. It's for other goals, like creating U.S. jobs, increasing our innovation. And if they want to do that, they have to look at the balance. So, for instance, in Congress right now, there is a majority of the House members who've sponsored a bill called the Trade Act, Trade Reform, Accountability, Development and Employment. Right. And it lays out a model to expand trade through new trade agreements that's pretty different than the old model. And they think that could help with exports. So maybe passing legislation like that, dealing with the China issue, is going to have to be part of the game. Well, We're uh, to, not to, only... I'm sorry. I just want to come back to the China issue for a minute and come back to the currency point that you made a few moments ago. There is increasing talk that the peg is going to end just as a byproduct of what's going on economically in China. I mean, do you think that problem is going to resolve itself and then that, that will help um, close the imbalance that you're talking about? Well, from your mouth to God's ears, that that's how it plays out. But I suspect that it's going to take some more concerted policy and political efforts than that. I mean, people, people do assume, economists, observers assume that actually the, the currency will move a little bit, and that's part of the response to the current climate. But as far as actually equalizing what some people say is between a 40 and 45 percent artificial gap. Right. I don't think that's going to happen without negotiation. Right. Laurie, we have about 15 seconds left. As you know, this week the Export-Import Bank approved a plan to provide fast-track approval for renewable energy deals. Is that going to help? 
You know, it's a very interesting question because part of what will determine how that plays out in the trade regime is whether or not those things have to be made here in the U.S. And therefore, as a result, we're investing in creating our green economy right. and we'll be an exporter in those sectors or are we going to be importing stuff that is built someplace else? Yeah. Well, we're going to have to leave it there. Lori Wallach, the director of Public Citizens Global Trade Watch, joining us from Washington. Thanks.